So the question is how to create an audio visualizer in After Effects. Now bear in mind the techniques in this could also be applied to standard After Effects components. You don't necessarily have to use Element 3D. Element 3D just gives you phenomenal uh, duplication possibilities and geometric control very, very easily. So that's why I like to use it. But the main technique in this is really getting the sound out of an audio file and then controlling it and using it then to control parts of your After Effects composition. So straight on with it. First thing we need to do, let's get our audio in. Um, and I happen to have a bit of blues here, which I'm going to stick in. Um, so there we go. And I'm going to drag it then down on the timeline. Um, and if you have a look in your audio, open up the waveform. There's your waveform. So really what you're looking to hopefully do is get stuff like this, these little um, hit points here and use them to control the appearance of your video. So now I know this audio track and I know that um, it's quite bass rich, which means there's a lot of muddiness in the bass. Now if I use that to control the visuals, it won't look very snappy. So I want to adjust this. Now equally, if you had a dance track that had a very snappy, punchy bass drum, then you might want to just mute the treble a bit to unclutter it. So I'm going to drag bass and treble on. I'm going to get rid of the bass or at least control it a bit and then put the treble up and that should create a snappier animation. Now the other thing about this is that supposing I had 10 different audio tracks and wanted to use different parts of them. Supposing I um, had a bass drum, a hi-hat, a guitar and different bits and they wanted to control parts of the animation. If I've got them all enabled, i.e. I've got this little speaker thing on all of them. When I go to convert to keyframes, everything will be lumped into one. So what you want to do is mute all the tracks that you don't want to appear in the keyframe while you do this next step, which is right click on the audio keyframe assistant and convert audio to keyframes. So now what you've got, if I close that, cause I don't need that and have a look, you've got effects left, right channel, both channels. And in each one, there is a whole bunch of keyframes. Now, we don't need the left and the right channel because I know that I just want a summation of both channels. Um, so just to keep the composition simple and keep the processing time quick, I've deleted those two. Now, when you click on this graph editor here, you can now see all the keyframes generated. And if you realize this is a huge amount of work that After Effects has just saved you doing. This is quite crucial. You've got a range approximately of about five to 40 units. Now, depending what you're going to control, you might want to limit that range or do a bit of what you'd say music quantization, keep the values really clean. And there's a simple way of doing that. Take the graph editor off, alt click on the slider. You've got this little statement here. Now it's very simple to just type in linear, then your value, comma, currently they started zero and they go up to about 45. That's the input. Then the output I want, I'm going to keep it at about zero because that's fine. Actually, no, I'm going to, sorry, change that to five because they start at five and I'm going to re-quantize that to zero and to say 30 for the time being. Now this can be changed at any point. It doesn't matter. So what we've said is we've got a messy bunch of values here. We've cleaned them so that the output will be zero to 30 and that's that. So not a particularly complicated statement. So the state we're at, we've got audio and we've got the value ready to be applied to something. So let's get on with element, I guess. So new, solid. You guys must know this by now, E3D. And there we go. And I'm just going to change the color to green. It helps to have a standard color profile that you use all the time so that you can find things easily. Here's element. And we want to obviously put the effect onto there. So going back to your effects panel, video copilot, element, drag it on, and that's it. So that's easy. Now the next bit is your visualization. Now what I used for the one that you saw at the start of this video was a selection of just single primitives. So if we go into here, we've got to basically find the primitives. Now mine are in version one primitives, and I'm gonna start with the donut. Look really good. And I know that, that was way too big. This is where you just experiment with size, but I think mine was right down to about 10. It was about the right size. So you've got a donut. So this is the first thing. So we're gonna put that on. 
and of course you can't see anything because the thing is so small now and the other thing I did was go into element effects I could have done this through the control panel can I but I'm being awkward so I'm going to go element effects group one and particle replicator and what I did here was I had 1200 of these things again it depends what you think it looks good at and a sphere and there is your sphere so that's easy peasy lemon squeezy the next bit is um, put a camera on just so you can get a bit closer to it I mean obviously you could increase the size but we want a bit of motion so I'm going to stick a camera on and have a look in my four views at where the camera is and at the moment that's kind of uh, that's my camera I'm going to move it in to about where it was before and then what I did in the video was a very simple technique of rotating this camera round the object and that's amazingly easy to do in After Effects all you do is right click on the camera create orbit null now obviously you could manually drag the camera around create a bezier and then it's just too much hassle just do an orbit because once you've got the orbit you can then go to your Y rotation start at zero go to the end of your animation and do however many you want so I'm going to just do one full rotation Oops. and so that just means that will be rotating really nicely and really cleanly so that's the first bit so we've now got a globe that rotates that looks kind of cool but doesn't do anything because there's no sound control so obviously the thing is how do you get that to work so for the sake of my sanity I'm going to remove so I don't know why I find it easier to move things up than down on this scroll thing all I did again this is your imagination you can control any aspect of this animation remember you've got the multi object you've got the deform properties in element 2.2 you can control any of those all I did because I wanted a fairly standard uh, visualization was I just controlled the size of the particle that was it so if you have a look down here is my particle size if I put that down to five straight away you can see what's happening there let me just uh, put that as uh, one view so you can see a bit easier I put it down to two and you can see so if you can make those jump in size all the time then obviously that's going to be quite funky so again hold down your alt key click on the little stopwatch and you get this and there's your pick whip so you drag that up and here's your slider put it on the slider so now what should be happening is it should be getting there you go you can see now that the size information is coming out of element automatically in time which is quite cool and can you see why you want to control the size because if we put that up to say 50 the donuts get so big they go solid so it, maybe you like that it looks actually quite good but it's just something to vary this is where you control it from so I'm going to put them down to 30 because from prior experience I know that works well and I'm not happy about this camera position I think it looks better from the top so I've got two choices I can either move the camera which I think I will because it's so easy to do on this so there's my view there I'm just going to move that camera to the top and have it in roughly the same place and hopefully you'll agree that looking down on these circles looks a lot better than from the side you get more of a geometric impression it just looks nice so that's that so we're at the state now where we've got a very complex Ge geometric object being controlled by the audio in After Effects and you've got a 3D null on the camera which just makes it do a really nice even pan around the object now and that's animated separately to the camera so the camera can also animate and that's something else I did within the other composition but before we carry on I just think that looks very flat and uninteresting so I think we should add a few lights and get that lit properly um, now remember lights can be keyframed as well so you can change the color over time as well just like visualizers seem to do I kind of like having a bland object that gets its color from light rather than a colored object 
because it's it seems more dynamic and there's more depth to it so here's a spotlight i'm going to put that on and straight away you can see that that's gone blue now then i'm going to put that on straight and i'm going to move that one back so let's get that on that side and i'm going to duplicate that camera so control d on the layer and i'm going to move the other one around the other side because i want sort of two-sided lighting and i'm going to duplicate those layers and then put two over here and then you start to get a really weird kind of thing so here's a weird kind of um a pile of weirdness if you will so there's something else that you can think about doing and that is obviously that looks okay but supposing we've got this camera and we move the camera slowly in so we're going to let's start here so we'll start here and then we're going to move the camera in now i'm not going to track it because i kind of want it to be the center in the in the center if you if that makes sense so we've got it there and i'm going to snap it through there so i'm actually inside and you get this which is fine but what i found worked better or to my mind it worked better was in element 2.2 you've got reflections so why not go into here and it doesn't have to be in that group because that group remember what you're seeing there is not what you're seeing on the screen so what we're going to do is find another a plane so try this if you like a disc i'm going to move that into a separate group because i want different control over it this is going to have to be pretty big and i'm going to make it a light sort of material so this this white will do fine and then click on this one and say mirror surface so it's going to reflect and we can experiment with this but here's two now you can see it's there and so this is where it can get interesting here collapse group one go to group two particle replicator we're not worried about that what we're worried about is the position and so i'm going to move this down i want it just clipping the bottom of this object now hopefully even in the rough preview you can start to see what this is doing so now you've got concentric circles around the outside and you've also got a reflection of the interior of those surfaces inside which just looks a lot more complicated with very little effort i don't know why i've got a keyframe now i'm just going to take that off now this maybe that's too far in so let's just try lifting this up there we go so now you can see that you're getting this weird multi-dimensional creation now I'm, st I'm not quite far in enough there because you can see that it's clipping you can see the tops of those objects also please remember that you can change the lens on this so you could have a really wide angle lens which will give you a different point of view like that for example so it allows you to show more of this now, and i think those lights are a bit severe so i might just lighten up that one a little bit just looks a little that's more like it so we've now got really nice different colors in it and like i said before remember you can just click down on these lights so for example here light options and you could start here you can go to uh, color and at the end of your composition you could radically change that to something completely different if you wanted it's up to you um, and you could do that on all four so you can really create a very psychedelic thing and i think that's the flexibility of the lights because you're live mixing different channels of light it's not like um it's not like you just got a light on uh, you've got a color on the object so let's change that one to a really vile kind of purpley pink kind of thing and you get the point so you're starting out on a you've got this weird reflection thing going on in the background which is good you can zoom in you can change the size of these things i mean again if you have a look at this it's really freaky kind of uh it's kind of bizarre isn't it 
And here's more about the power of elements. Because you've got this amazing control over these objects. What's to stop you on a very simple level? So can duplicate element, press Alt and your square bracket, Alt and your square bracket, and then on this one, change the shape, put in a different primitive, and that way you'd be amazed at the difference. So we got the donut at the moment. Let's click on the folder. Let's go to um, version one models, primitives. Let's try a cube. And again, that's going to be way too big. Let's do that. And let's take off the donut. So just uncheck the little box and have a look. And now you have a very, very different look. It couldn't be more different. And all you've done is just clicked a single thing. So it goes from that, boom, bidi, boom. And then it changes to that. And here you go. You've got a really kind of crazy thing going on. And of course, remember, your control is amazing because you, you not only control the lights, you also control the camera. So if we go to four views again, and you could just get this camera here and move that round completely. You can change it while it's while it's moving and then all of a sudden you've got a radically different visualization. Anyway, it's all down to your creativity. But with Element, it's probably the fastest way to do this. If you don't have Element, just create um, either using Cinema 4D or anything else, little 3D objects and create dozens of them and, and off you go. You can just pick whip the whole lot to the audio or, or run an equalizer on the audio, separate it into different audio bandwidth so you've got different effects and then a, a pick whip them to different effects. It's all down to how you want to work. Um, I personally like Element because it's the fastest. And here's another thing, we've got a sphere here. But supposing we changed it to a 3D grid, then you've got these little cubes that all animate. And again, you can change that. So for example, you can change that to 888 and then scale the shape. And now you have a really psychedelic animation, which of course, you could uh, pick with the shape. You could change that so the shape keeps contracting, expanding the whole overall shape rather than just the pieces within. Let's put that in. So there's your, your cube animating. And again, you've got this reflection here, so you can sort of have infinite levels if you want, or you can go inside the shape. Um, of course, you can change the actual nature of the element itself. So let's take both of those off and let's put in a blob because blobs are always good. And remember, it doesn't end there. Now you've got your blobs all doing weird stuff, but how about you change the material on the blob? It could be that you quite like the idea of a silver blob, like an aluminium blob. That looks good. And it also could be that you want to change your environment reflection to be something a bit more interesting. And here you go, you've now got silver blobs because what could be better than a whole bunch of silver blobs let's be honest um, also please remember that this reflection doesn't have to be a static image you can also import a video so like a video of a nightclub create it into a custom layer and then use that custom layer as a reflection with elements then you've actually got moving footage being reflected in this object anyway i hope this has shown that you can really have superb control over pretty much everything on this, how it deforms, how it twists, um, everything. And it's not difficult or time consuming. So I hope you got something out of this and it'd be interesting to see what amazing effects people come up with using this very simple technique.